I have a tendency to overreact. And I want everybody on the message board to be real, real honest <laughs> with me. If I'm overreacting, and Caleb, you can too. I have a tendency to overreact. And there's something that is really rubbing me the wrong way. I remember I was doing a show with John Adams and Tony Hawk, the skater, walked by coincidentally at SEC Media Days. And I said, look, there's Tony Hawk. And John went and tried to get him to come on our show, and Tony wouldn't do it. But he said, well, sorry that he called you out in front of all the media. He tends to overreact. So I do overreact. But I don't think I'm overreacting now. And I want to get everybody's thoughts. And if I am, because right now Twitter says I am, but it's today's tough question, and it has to do with charging you cash to go to the Orange and White game. Boom. Today's tough question is now, and it's brought to you by our friends at Bassey Lawn and Garden. Man Alive, it's worth a drive. Today's tough question. Take a side. Take a stand. The Dave Hooker Show, a presentation of offthehooksports.com. Bassey Lawn and Garden, Man Alive, it's worth the drive. I don't care if you're talking about industrial mowers, commercial mowers. They've got it for you in Cleveland. Come from Nashville, Knoxville, Chattanooga. Save a ton of money restocking your fleet or starting your new business. They have absolutely fantastic residential products as well. Blowers, trimmers, and the whole nine yards. Tennessee is going to charge $5 for the orange and white game. Now, I'm not a guy who goes home every day and watches three hours of CNN or Fox News. I'm not a guy who pretends to know everything about the economy. As a matter of fact, I passed up on an investment deal that would have yielded me about 40% in six weeks. So I'm not the guy to go to, but I do know that this country may be headed towards a recession. I do know that inflation is ridiculous because I feed an 18-year-old son. And our grocery bill has gone from like 150 bucks to 300 bucks a week. I do know that the orange and white game by design is not going to show anybody anything because that's not Josh Heupel's style, who I'm told by uh, some, some people within that athletic department that by design, he doesn't show anything to anybody when the reporters are there, obviously, but he doesn't even show anything the high school coaches when they have their upcoming clinic, which will be in the middle of spring. So to have Caleb, a charge to go the orange and white game really, really bothers me. This is not a manufactured step up on the soapbox thing. It just bothers me. Tennessee had a heck of a season. Okay. But we're talking about, a Florida comeback, and an Alabama field goal made, and it was just a good season. But suddenly, they're charging for the orange and white game when I think you should still be bringing fans in. I mentioned my 18-year-old son, okay? So he doesn't know Tennessee football to be anything good. He He doesn't remember back 13 years ago, and he certainly doesn't remember back to the mid-2000s or late 90s. This is a chance to continue to bring people in. This is a chance to make the orange and white game a spectacle. Have 100,000 people in there because it's free. And make that big push, just like Alabama did. It was after, I believe, their first championship game. They had people in the concourses. They had well over 92,000, which I believe they seat. You could do that at Neyland Stadium. And it would be a fantastic event that would get you pub. Instead, you're going to charge $5, probably have, what, 60,000 people. That's, what, $300,000? Whoopity-doo-dah. That's nothing compared to what Tennessee fans have given you back. I'm incredibly frustrated by the $5. I can afford it. I can get a credential. I'm thinking about you the fans. Now, so far at last check, when I posted this on Twitter, it was about two to one that Tennessee fans didn't mind paying for the game. What are your thoughts, Caleb? I'm with you. I think it's um, and I don't think it's going to be sixty thousand. I think sixty thousand is what you usually expect on a spring game. We, you know, year in and year out. 
how many of those sixty thousand are not going to pay the five dollars? I think a lot. I think it's a, I think it's a blatant middle finger to fans because I'm with you. It's not going to give you that much more money. You're talking about a couple hundred thousand dollars. That's chump change. You can just call a booster and say, "Could you write me two hundred thousand dollars a check for that?" And they'll do it in a heartbeat. And so I don't understand what the motive. I think some of all Twitter. And I'm, I, I understand why, because you know me, I'm a huge fan of Danny White. I love everything he's done. I think he's the best athletic director in the country. I think they're letting their fandom, their, their support for Danny White cloud their judgment. So they're making some excuses for him. If Philip Fulmer and Jeremy Pruitt are doing this two years into Jeremy Pruitt's seasons, two, two years into Jeremy Pruitt's, Jeremy Pruitt's tenure on Rocky Top, Vol Twitter is getting mad. They're getting mad. If Dave Hart and Butch Jones are doing this in 2016, Vol Twitter is getting mad, but I Danny agree. White and right now, of- and right now, Caleb, it's seventy percent to thirty percent. Yes, take my money. Yes, take my money. And, and and listen, I think Josh Hopple and this program will get to that point where it's yes, take my money. But this is too early. Travis says you're a traditional kind of guy like I am. Um, but it's only five dollars. Problem is, two years it'll be ten and so forth. Agreed. And you're not even seeing a real game. Smoky Mountain Red said maybe they should charge adults and not kids. I get with the cost of everything nowadays, but charges adults for sure. In my opinion, I hate seeing grown men carrying in all the stuff to get signed. Well, I'm with you there. Do they still do the fan day before the orange and white game where you're able to get stuff signed? Well, they didn't have it last year. They didn't even have a game because there were there was right. construction going on at Nayland Stadium. Um, so I don't know. I have a philosophy. It's funny that, that they say that. I have a philosophy where I don't. I will never wear the jersey of a player younger than me. Like I just never ever will. I'm a, I'm a Grizzlies fan, but even before he was getting in trouble, you were never going to see me buy a John Morant jersey. You can <laughs> a John Morant Beretta. <laughs> <laughs> I've been following. Um, story thinking of you by the way (laughs) travis says butcher dooley did the same thing i believe had to buy a wristband well butch and dooley anything they do you should do the exact opposite dooley also had a big sign on the locker room that says opportunity is nowhere and (laughs) he he tried to convince everybody that it was now and here and we can pull up the sign it said opportunity is nowhere as you walk into the locker room it's classic i'm sure you remember that Caleb. oh i remember that and the thing was Dooley like apparently talked about his love for architecture like he was when he was athletic director at louisiana tech he would go over designs for the new stadium and i'm like so you brag about your interest in architecture but you didn't notice that this says opportunity is nowhere yeah i mean you could just work at a graphics company and see that so um it's the first time it won't be free since 2011 since 2011 it's not going to be free according to our friends at w-a-t-e so it'll be five dollars uh, it's going to be a 230 game and all proceeds will count as a contribution because we had this question on the message board the my all campaign the my all campaign just goes to tennessee that's like me calling it a my off the hook campaign. Well, it's just going to me and Caleb. <laughs> I mean, I and I we are going to because I know that there are ways to donate to to, to people and uh, via YouTube videos, and we're, we're, I'm not going to do that. It just feels weird. But I am going to have a monthly charity, but it's not going to go to me. I mean, yeah. it's going to be like the diabetes association or the uh, coats for the cold or something, but you make it sound like because it goes to the, my all contribution fund that it's, it's a, they're trying to raise $500 million to keep pace in the ever increasing athletic venue arms race. This may generate $300,000 at best. Yeah. So they are, what they're less than one one thousandth of the way there with this. They got like they got like it's oh my gosh, this this kind of reminds me. I'll, I'll tell you something you weren't covering at the time, but the athletic department did about three years ago. Fulmer and Jeremy Pruitt out of the blue decided to nix the Big Orange Caravan in the summer. Just decided to nix it. I remember and that. I remember that. You remember that? 
Mm-hmm. Okay. And they and, and their selling point was like, it's going to be a fan centric event. We're going to send Smokey and the cheerleaders, and they're going to be able to take pictures with the fans. I'm like, fans want to talk to you guys. They don't want to talk to Smokey and the cheerleaders. That's nice, but they want to talk to you guys. Yeah. And, and boosters don't want to play golf with Smokey. Yeah, exactly. They don't. They don't. They want to play golf with the coach. This, this is getting too big for your britches. It's exactly what it is. Um, Benjamin says, I don't mind to support five bucks. Think you all are making a mountain out of a molehill. I knew some people would say that, and I'm completely cool with you saying that, Benjamin. I respect your opinion. When would he say that if we were if, if, if we were covering a seven and five team? Right. Right. I don't think, think so. I don't I don't think so. Uh Benjamin says win and you can charge, lose, and no one will pay. That's how it works. True. Now, John says maybe have that money go to Children's Hospital or some other charity. Or Raleigh says go to towards NIL donations. Well, they ain't hurting. Or split That's between the players. Yeah, I don't think you could even do that. I don't think yeah. you can get money in directly. You know, um, Smoky Mountain Red says go fund me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, um, yeah, and Smokey actually said they want to talk to me, but uh, I'm terrible at golf. But the bottom line is just why. It could be such a positive thing that we're talking about this morning. And Benjamin, I way back in on this, okay, because you're the one who seems to have the biggest problem. And I can roll with that. But way back in on this, if we were talking about how this was going to the children's hospital or this was not a charge and it was all kids get a free concession drink or something celebrate last year's near championship or near college football playoff run whatever you want to call it all of those things we appreciate you fans for raising more money than you've raised in a millennium why not do that why not have that be the conversation in the end it's going to result in more money because here's what those associate ADs that are running around Tennessee, some of which have real jobs, some of which don't, but a big part of what they do is reaching out to donors. So if you had a hundred thousand people in the stands because it was free and it was covered by ESPN as, Oh my gosh, Tennessee is definitely back. In case you didn't know, they had a hundred thousand people for the spring game. That's going to lead to more donations. I just think it's short-sighted and silly. No, I, I, I think you have a really good point. Also, the raising $500 million, the SEC TV deal with ESPN kicks in in a year. Like, there's there's a lot of money that's about to start going to the, to the schools. That, you're, you know, I, I just I, – I don't think we're – I think we're short-selling just how much money Tennessee's about to get on its own anyway. This would be like when I worked for the Knoxville News Sentinel and they were going to charge me for reporters' notebooks or pens. I mean, that would just be – Silly. I'm trying to that think would be of, ridiculous. I'm trying to think of other examples. You work in corporate world aside from this as well. I mean, this would be like I, I'm trying to think of a good example, but it just doesn't make any sense to me. Daniel says I agree with Dave on the fact that it opens a can of worms. Five dollars next, ten dollars next, uh, twenty for thirty. Call Josh, get him on the show. I'll ask him. We'll call Josh Heupel. Or maybe you mean Josh Ward, who will join us tomorrow. I don't know. But nevertheless, it just it, it really frustrates me. I think that Tennessee should be super excited. And this is one of the things that I find scary when you start to wander away a little bit too much from tradition. And Danny White is not of all through and through. Josh Heupel is not of all through and through. Um, but... Tennessee is used to balls through and through and Philip Fulmer and Johnny majors and back on through the years. But when you start to think, Hey, we got this figured out. You start to charge for orange and white games. I don't think that's, I don't think that's a good sign. I don't think that's a good sign whatsoever. And I think you need to be really careful about your base because again, I I said this before, a lot of those people that are going to be asked to write donor tickets yeah, you know, I mentioned my son that he's he's 18. He's not going to be writing donor tickets anytime soon or donor checks, excuse me. But at some point they are. And a lot of those people may not have had good memories about Tennessee for years, may not have good memories from last year because they 
weren't able to afford the tickets or they didn't have the wherewithal to know that Tennessee was going to have a special season and who did. This is just an opportunity to put a cherry on the Sunday. Uh, it just befuddling to me, befuddling to me, Caleb. I agree. I agree. The only thing I would push back is not being involved you guys through and through. If you look at Tennessee football's history, uh, with the only exception being Johnny Majors, who really did bring Tennessee into the modern era. Former didn't. Former rode the wave of the modern era. He didn't really bring Tennessee. He didn't really bring Tennessee into a new era. Um, so with the only exception of Johnny Majors, the coaches that have really brought Tennessee to a different era were all non vols Robert Nalen, Doug Dickey were the two major ones that did right. that. And I didn't clarify the point. My point is, if things were to ever go slightly south, you don't have that built-in safety net. I feel like yeah. with Majors and Fulmer, if things – and they did for both coaches, and they probably held on to both coaches a little bit too long. But Danny White and Josh Heupel, if things go a little bit south, and they always could, I don't think they will, this is the type of thing that hangs the safety net. Yeah. No, you're right. That is true. I fully agree with you on that. The safety net of equity. Maybe we've come up with a new term. <laughs> I don't know the sort of the, the rim shot, but uh, it just it just frustrates me. Uh, I, I, John saying there would be a point where only a thousand people might want to pay for twenty dollar tickets to the spring game. Boss time saying Nick Saban wanting a rule change because he can't handle high tempo offenses. I want to get to Saban whining as well. Travis says I quit going to Titans game because I was told the reason concessions went up forty percent was because. They were supposed to be good that year. Remember this, too. They're making most of the money on concessions of parking. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, it's, uh, it's not like they're losing money if they don't charge for a ticket. Well, for history lessons, for history buffs here for Tennessee, um, after they won the East in 2007, 2008 was the first year where Mike Hamilton decided to, to charge students to go to games. You know, student tickets used to be free. Well, we know what happened in 2008. So the year they decide to charge students, they go five and seven, Fulmer's fired, and then enter a decade of darkness. 